Hey everyone, it's Amanda. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys how I take and edit pictures of my art. You guys know I share a lot of pictures of my art and my bullet journal spreads over on my Instagram and while it may seem like something simple, you know, just take a picture of your art and post it, it can actually be kind of difficult to get a good picture of any sort of art because you want it to look as clean as possible, you don't want to alter the colors, and you want to highlight the details and make sure that your art is being showcased as best as possible. The techniques that I've kind of figured out myself and that I'm going to show you guys today. I use it for my Instagram, my website, and I've even used it in some digital portfolios in the past. And speaking of websites and digital portfolios, this week's sponsor is Wix. If you are an artist of any kind, like a designer, an illustrator, a musician, a painter, I highly recommend that you guys have a website that showcases your work. A bit later in the video, I'm going to show you guys how easy it was for me to create a website on Wix that showcases all of my photos, my artwork, and my content. But without further do, let's get right into it. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is obviously take the picture. I actually use both my phone and my DSLR camera depending on where the photo is gonna end up going. If you're just posting the photos on Instagram, your phone is totally fine, but if you are submitting these photos or your artwork to a digital portfolio or somewhere that requires higher quality, I definitely recommend using a better camera. I have three main tips for taking pictures of art. The first is lighting. Now lighting is important but as I'm gonna show you guys later on if you don't have the most perfect lighting do not fret because we can also always fix it in post but obviously the less editing you have to do the better and with great lighting sometimes you don't even need to edit a photo at all the best lighting and the most ideal lighting is actually natural lighting for me so if there's a good sunny day outside and I have a window like the one behind me I can just like hold up a picture of my art and snap it with my phone that's obviously for a more you know, casual photo like one that's going to go on Instagram. Or if I don't have any good natural lighting and I want something a little bit more set up and I, I'm going to need like a wide angle, I will actually use my ring light. It's great because it actually has a gooseneck stand so I can bend it over my desk and have it completely parallel to my desk and kind of lighting up the artwork completely evenly. And then I can kind of hold my DSLR camera or my phone through the hole and take the picture. With lighting, you're gonna need to experiment a bit because all rooms and all light bulbs are completely different, but I find that, especially if you're just taking a picture of a sketch or something, you can actually hold up the photo and your phone or your camera and kind of just like rotate around until you find lighting that is the most ideal for whatever drawing you're going to take a picture of because that's another thing if you're taking a picture of a painting or a sketch the lighting is going to need to be completely different because you're going to want to highlight certain things like with paintings colors are super important but with sketches I guess it's going to be black and white so you just want to make sure the contrast is there the next thing is the perspective of your photo this is probably the most important part about taking art pictures because you don't want it to be tilted too much this way or tilted too much that way because it can completely change the look of your art for example if I am taking a picture of a portrait I drew, if I tilt it too much one way, it can make the forehead look too big or the chin look too big. And you wanna make sure that your art is being showcased as accurately as possible. You're never gonna be able to get it completely straight on, but there are a couple little tricks that will help you do so. You can actually turn the grid on for most cameras or phones and using the grid to line up with the edges of the paper or the canvas or whatever you're taking a picture of will really help you to get that straight on perspective of your art. And my final tip for this section would be to take multiple. Just like how when you take a selfie, you take a million and you choose the best one, the same goes for art pictures. Depending on the slight variation of your hand position and the angle, you might find that one picture accurately represents the drawing more than the other or the lighting might change slightly. So the more you take the better and then you can narrow it down to the best ones possible And if you take multiple pictures, but kind of switch out the lighting switch out which way you're holding it That also might help you to find the best fit for the particular picture that you are wanting to post now The next step in this whole process is the editing This is actually my favorite part about posting pictures of art because this is when you can finally see something come together You clean it all up and it looks really finished and polished and something that you can 
share with the world. With my Instagram, I tend to get a little lazy with taking the photos because I am pumping out so much content on the daily. So editing can really save my butt when, let's say I have a picture that doesn't look so great from the get-go. The editing can really just tweak it and make it look like it was a perfect picture to begin with. I have two main methods of editing photos for art. Uh, one is more detailed and high quality, probably better for like a digital portfolio or something that you have to submit with higher quality images. And then the other one is just for like Instagram and sharing online and you can do it right on your phone. So let's start with the easiest one, which is the phone. The main app that I use to edit art photos is Snapseed. Snapseed is truly one of the greatest photo editing apps out there. I just love it so much. I've gotten so many people converted through it and it's just great because it's pretty much like a mini Photoshop on your phone and it's super user friendly. There's a lot of different things that you can do with it. So I'm going to quickly take you through the process of me editing a basic art picture on Snapseed. So once I have it opened up, the first thing I like to do is go to Tune Image and that's more like your standard photo editing stuff. There's like brightness, contrast, ambiance, highlights. I really like to have clean white in my photos so I do have to work a lot on brightening the photos. So I will increase the brightness, I'll increase the ambiance which kind of flattens it out and makes it look really really clean and professional. I'll increase the highlights quite a lot. Snapseed actually also has curves, so if you are familiar with curves on Lightroom or Photoshop, you can actually do that right on your phone. So sometimes I'll raise the highlights a little and then lower the shadows on curves. The next thing that I focus on is perspective and cropping. Although I try my hardest to get the perfect perspective when I'm actually taking the photo, sometimes it, it's really impossible to do it by hand. So you can actually tweak it in Snapseed. All you have to do is press perspective and you can actually actually uh, kind of tilt the photo one way or the other and you can do like free form dragging, rotating it a little bit and then I also, this is where I also crop the photo usually into a square. Obviously if it's for Instagram, square is ideal. Then this next step is where everything really comes together. It's what I do to all my photos and it really cleans everything up. You'll see why. So if you click selective Basically what selective tool does is it selects a color on the photo and that color is what you will be editing. So if I add a selection point onto this white, as you can see it will only be editing that white color. So I can completely brighten it and then desaturate it so that any weird tints or hues are completely gone and it just looks like a clean white. I also use this selection tool on the background of the photo, especially if I have something laying on a desk like my bullet journal or something, I can use this to even out any tones in the background because nothing's gonna be completely even, especially with when you're you know playing with lighting and everything. So I can see that this section on the desk is a little bit lighter, so I'll darken it a bit and you can also decrease the saturation as well. Uh, it's just such a great tool and it really lets you get into the fine details of your photo. I use this a lot for any photo, not just for art photos because it is so, so great. A lot of it is trial and error. You'll be able to play around with all the tools and get the hang of it, but once you do, it really, really elevates any picture of your art. The final thing that I do in order to tweak things is go into details and I'll increase the structure a little and the sharpening, but not by much. So now as you can see, I have a clean picture of my art. Everything looks really professional. You can really tell the difference, especially when I, when I show you the before and after, just based off of Snapseed. I don't put any filters on it whatsoever because I don't want to alter the colors too much. So Snapseed, really great, highly recommend it. And then the final thing I do before I post it to Instagram, and I actually really recommend a lot of you guys do this, especially if you are an aspiring artist or freelancer or whatever, is to add a watermark onto your photos. Just because with the internet nowadays, it's so easy for people to share things and you wanna get credit where credit's due. And I can do that right on my phone as well, which is great. The app that I use is Fonto. So you just open that up open whatever photo you want to do and you can type in your watermark. I like to make it pretty small, move it to a corner. You can also reduce the opacity so that it doesn't take away from the art. And yeah, there you go, uh, a personalized watermark. So as I mentioned, I also edit art photos on Photoshop as well, depending on where the photo is going. So let's say I have a really high quality photo that I took of my art with my DSLR. I would typically edit that on Photoshop and it's pretty much the same process as what I did on my phone. 
It's just the tools are on Photoshop rather than Snapseed. Uh, I'm not going to get into this because Photoshop is a whole other beast, but all of the terms are the same, so you can play around with curves, you can do dodge and burn tools, selective. So now that you've taken and edited your art photos like a pro, it's time to put them out into the universe and share them with the world. Sharing to Instagram is pretty straightforward, especially since most of the photos are edited beforehand and on your phone already, depending on what you're doing. Another place that I share and post a lot of my artwork on is my website, and I've been working on this website for quite a while, and I'm really excited to be launching it and sharing it with you guys. If you are an artist of any kind, like a designer, an illustrator, a musician, a painter, I highly recommend that you guys have a website that showcases your work. It's so important that you have a website or a digital portfolio that looks clean and professional, especially in this internet era where your next client could happen upon your website and they need to be able to easily see your body of work. I know that making a website can be so overwhelming and confusing, especially if you're someone who has had no experience in web design. Trust me, I get you. I was feeling the exact same way and I've been putting off making my website for the longest time. But that's why using Wix was so amazing for me because not only was it intuitive, but the results ended up looking professional and beautiful as well. I was able to be really creative with my website and customize it to my own liking. There are a variety of different features and templates available depending on your needs. There's Wix videos, Wix Pro Gallery, Wix bookings, as well as a bunch of other specialized verticals like e-commerce, restaurants, music, and events. Anything you might need like custom domains, mailboxes, email newsletters, it's all covered by Wix. I truly can't recommend it enough. You can actually check out the brand new website that I made with Wix. It's live and published for you guys to see. I'm so happy and proud of how it turned out. It's just amandarachley.com. On there, you'll find things like pictures of my art, a video gallery, some frequently asked questions, as well as a little suggestion box for you guys to leave ideas and suggestions of videos that you want to see next from me. So go check it out and let me know what you think of my web design skills. And if you want to try out Wix for yourself, be sure to click the link in the description box below. All right, everyone, so that's it for this video. Hopefully it helped you out and gave you a couple ideas and tricks for editing and taking pictures of your art. I'm expecting all of the art photos that you guys tag me in to be beautiful and clean and professional from now on. If you want to see all of these art photos in action and want to see more from me, you can go follow me over on my Instagram. Instagram at Amanda H. Doodles. But other than that, I think I'm going to sign off. So I'll talk to you in my next video. Bye everyone.